Good afternoon, every, everybody. Uh, I know that uh, you are in a good uh, state of welfare. You are in a mood of rest and digest uh, after lunch. But uh, we have to spend um, more speech about uh, welfare in Norse, so stay strong. OK. Uh, here I will show you um, some images of uh, what you, you can see in a common uh, riding school. And um, then I'm going to ask you, please, if you uh, looked uh, at the arrow that will uh, appear. Uh, the, the, the color of the arrow indicates uh, what you have to, to uh, pay attention to and have the same meanings, okay? Red one, white, yellow one, and then the black, okay? And after that, uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, in, in uh, your opinion, what uh, are the main critical points uh, uh, of riding school uh, uh, management? Uh, yes? Okay. And then, after the presentation of the morning, you have to, to have a good knowledge about it. One. Okay, perfect. They were tied. Yes. Thank you. Nobody else? Okay. Okay, of course, uh, um, there are some of the, the say that uh, you, have, uh, you have said. Uh, feeding and watering uh, characteristics and methods uh, could be critical points uh, uh, in uh, riding school uh, horse management. Also, bedding characteristics, uh, stable design, and uh, uh, the freedom of movement, uh, of course, as my colleague said before me. Francesca told you about uh, um, the characteristic of feeding methods uh, in riding school, so I, I go fast on this uh, slide. Basically, the horse uh, is uh, feeding with uh, a method that uh, is not uh, um, the, the good one based on uh, his natural needs. Uh, generally, in riding school, the diet uh, is not customized and um, is uh, an high energy diet that the yeah, diet that is uh, quickly consumed because it's very palatable and this could predispose to the development of uh, uh, some gastrointestinal disease like colic. Um, the administration of hay is limited to uh, two three times a day, and this means that the horse that, uh, as my colleague said before, is. Uh, a, graze and a grazing animal, so it's not, uh, this kind of administration is not sufficient to satisfy the food motivation of the horse that could redirect this behavior towards uh, uh, litters or in manifestation of stereotypy. And um, another thing, uh, another important thing is the way in which uh, uh, the food is, uh, is administered. Uh, the use of some uh, tools like INAT or IREC uh, um, can predispose the, the horse to, the, uh, to uh, take an unnatural feeding position that could not be um, good for the uh, upper away cleaning system and also expose the horse to development uh, or to um, risk of uh, ocular phonetic body and uh, can affect also the health of muscle and neck in, uh, in nerve in the neck. Uh, regarding uh, water administration, uh, also this uh, is a part of, uh, of the nutrition. And um, of course, uh, uh, the horse uh, consuming a lot of liters of water a day and uh, uh, giving the horse the um, water, um, watering the horse manually could be challenging for, uh, for the caretaker. Um, but uh, uh, the buckets uh, and the flow throat are the um, more natural method to administer, or, uh, to administer water to the horses. 
and uh, uh, also the drink uh, are good, uh, but are good uh, especially for, uh, uh, for the caretaker because they uh, are comfortable to use. And uh, the important thing uh, is uh, um, that the water uh, have to be clean in, uh, other ty in uh, all the type of administration. The, the rules is that the, the, the water have to be clean because a dirty water could predispose uh, ores to develop uh, uh, diarrhea and uh, um, colic and also uh, dehydration. Uh, regarding uh, bedding, uh, also uh, the characteristic of litter could uh, have an effect uh, on horse welfare because uh, um, a low litter is a, low, is a litter that uh, uh, doesn't uh, allow the horse to uh, lie down in a, in a good way, to sleep in a good way, and also um, this, uh, the, 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 material of, the material of litter is very important. Straw is generally preferred, preferred by horse because uh, um, could uh, satisfaction the feeding motivation of the horse, uh, is, uh, um, the curiosity in explorative behavior, hollow a deep, the, the enrichment of a deeper sleep, and uh, uh, is uh, showed that horse that live on uh, straw uh, show less aggressive behavior toward uh, human and toward uh, conspecific. Uh, also, the quality of litter, as Francesca said be uh, before me, is very important because horses are very susceptible in the development of uh, respiratory problems, so uh, we have to pay attention to the presence of dust. Okay, in this case, we have, in this slide, we have uh, two examples uh, of uh, stable. A stable that is designed in a beautiful way. When I look at uh, this table, I, I think that is Majestis, the, the one on the left, but basically is a golden cage, okay? The other uh, stable is less scenic, of course, but uh, is best for the, for the horse welfare. Why? Because generally in uh, riding school, uh, as um, Emanuela said, uh, the horse uh, are individually uh, stabled. Uh, okay, but uh, um, we can uh, um, individually stable the horse uh, with uh, pay attention to the um, to the conspecific relationship. We can uh, uh, we can build a, um, a stable that have a wall characterized by grill uh, that uh, can allow the, the horse to interact with co specific, uh, keep in touch, uh, sniff, uh, etc. And also, it's important that the horse could see outside the box, uh, the environment, uh, the co specific that do activity and stuff like that. Uh, also, dimension of the box are very important because uh, has uh, for the bedding um, a box that will have uh, a good dimension uh, could allow the horse to sleep to sleep well and to to do uh, all his activities. And um, the general rule is: the more horse, uh, the more hours horse spend in the box, uh, the more space uh, would be give uh, to the horse. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, for the for the health of the respiratory tract, it's important that the ventilation in the stable is optimal. And la uh, for, uh, for the last uh, things, uh, uh, paddock. The presence of the paddock uh, is a good thing uh, because uh, improve the, the mental health of the horses and also uh, tend to reduce the manifestation of stereotypy. And uh, the, the things that is important is not uh, only uh, the presence of the paddock, ma, but also the management of the paddock. So in the paddock, uh, there will be also always uh, um, water, shadow, and also uh, hay to, to consume. Okay. During the day, you, you, ha you had seen these, uh, these images a lot of time. I know, but uh, what I want to show you is the difference uh, uh, based on management, okay? Because we have here 
a uh, diagram of the time budget in fera horse that spend a lot of time eating, uh, less time standing, okay? This is uh, the graph of horse stabled in group. So not feral horse, domesticated horse, but stabled in a group of eight subjects with a, a libitum uh, hay. So it's very similar to the other one, okay? Um, below we have uh, here an images of the time budget in uh, horses that are stabled individually but that can interact with each other. So they spend a lot of time eating, but all, uh, uh, also a lot of time standing, okay? On the other side, the diagram that is more different from the, the other is a diagram that shows the time budget of horses that are stable individually and cannot have any type of interaction with conspecific. And they show a lot of time standing and a little amount of time eating, okay? This is the, 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 the great difference. Um, and the one, what I want to say to you is that it's not only the fact that the horse is in nature or is stable, but also the type of management that could influence the, the, the behavior and the time budget of the horse. Okay. Uh, some uh, scientific recommendation, so recommendation based on uh, uh, scientific research. For nutrition, uh, all the research say that it's very important to have uh, a paddock or to give the horse the opportunity to choose what to eat or have the opportunity to have uh, uh, ad libitum hay, because uh, this can satisfy his food motivation and uh, can uh, um, allow the horse to behavior as in nature, as Federica said, uh, Francesca said, sorry. And um, uh, the other recommendation uh, is uh, do not increase the, the number of time the concentrate is administered, because this uh, could lead the horse to develop uh, um, uh, other stereotypi, okay? Um, okay. Regarding uh, society, uh, it's very important that to the, uh, to the, to the horse uh, that uh, he can reach uh, his conspecific, uh, can interact, uh, this reduce the frustration and the manifestation of stereotypi. And um, what we can do are, is uh, structure the box and the paddock in a way that allow the horse uh, to, to have uh, this uh, uh, interaction. Um, not only let the horse see the other horse, but, uh, but also um, leave the horse touch the other horse. Obviously, for a owner, is a little bit. Uh, the owners can be worried about uh, uh, put his horse in paddock with uh, with other horse for injuries, for a series of uh, problems. But if the group are for, are um, formed in a good way, there is no problem. Okay, in this uh, in this this type of um, stabulation. Uh, for the free movement, of course, it is uh, demonstrated the importance of give uh, the possibility to the horse to move. And uh, um, if there is no possible place horse in paddock, it is important to take uh, she or he outside as much as possible. And um, as uh, Alice say in, uh, in one of his uh, is work, uh, the positive uh, effect of the paddock uh, tend to disappear if the horse uh, is uh, newly stabled, uh, newly put uh, in an, an individual uh, stabulation. So it's very important to have uh, always uh, the, the free movement. Okay, the last things that um, could, be, could be do is uh, um, improve the characteristic of facilities. Uh, we have some example, there is this, the same uh, stable before and after the uh, modification made to improve the social contacts 
and uh, there is the same stable again uh, with difference between uh, uh, a closed door and uh, simply an open door with, with horse that can see what happened around him and uh, can um, investigate and doing stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, some scientific research, uh, researchers uh, say that uh, make a facilities improvement uh, could be a way to, to help the horse uh, to cope with, uh, uh, with its uh, uh, environment. Okay, now I'm going to uh, talk a little about my PhD project that uh, is titled Analysis of Neurophysiological and Behavioral Variables in Horse Related to Stable Management. Basically, I uh, compared uh, um, horses belonging to uh, race or horse stable versus uh, horses belonging to riding school stable and compare behavioral and physiological parameters during the execution of a behavioral test. Uh, I measured uh, how I measured behavior. I measured behavior through the, um, the heterogram, that is basically a diagram that summarizes the um, species specific behavioral repertoire of an individual in terms of uh, uh, frequency, duration, and latency of each behavior. And I analyze for the physiological parameter the heart rate variability. The heart rate variability is an index that uh, uh, could be uh, obtained from uh, uh, simply an electrocardiogram, okay? It is an index that represents the balance in activation of the sympathetic and parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic branch is the branch that activates when the horse is in a fight or flight state. And uh, the parasympathetic uh, uh, one is that uh, that is activated now in <laughs> in hour because it's the rest and digest one, okay? Is that uh, is the, the branch that activates when uh, there is a, a situation of rest, of calm, and, and so on. Okay, I do uh, a series of various uh, um, tests, okay, behavioral tests that are human interaction test, novel object, and positive reinforcement. Of course, as said before by my colleagues, uh, the, um, the relationship between horse and human is very important for the welfare of the horse. So the evaluation of the quality of this interaction is very important. The novel object uh, is a test, uh, is a funny test for me, but not for the horse, that um, uh, is useful to evaluate how the horse reacts towards uh, um, a, stimu uh, a stimuli that appears suddenly, without the horse know why and where, and um, is used to uh, evaluate the uh, capability of horse to cope with, uh, uh, with stimuli that uh, come from the environment. The positive reinforcement test uh, is a test that uh, was, is used uh, also to evaluate the cognitive uh, capabilities of the horse. Okay? And uh, I compared the eight horse belonging to race horse stable with eight horse uh, belonging to um, riding school stable um, and analyzed the videos and uh, the, the electrocardiograms. Okay. We have some video that I hope that will work. Okay. In the first case, we have a horse that reacts uh, normally, okay, without problem. I have, uh, during, the, um, during the test, I have a webcam on me, and I recorded the reaction of the horse toward my presence. In this case, the horse have, uh, had no problems, okay? It's quiet and investigating uh, me without problems. In the second case, we have uh, um, a horse that stayed in the corner. He pay, she paid attention to, uh, to me, but uh, want, didn't want to interact uh, in any way with me, okay? Stay in her corner, uh, okay? And in the last case, uh, you will see me run away because I risk to, to die that, <laughs> that day. 
because um, uh, she uh, tried to bite me and then to, to kick, so I ran away very fast. And after that, she uh, behavior, uh, uh, manifest behavior of uh, uh, nervous, uh, of uh, discomfort in general, okay? is <laughs> not very happy to have me in the box. Okay, the, here we have the novel object test. Okay, in the first uh, we have a horse that, okay, disappear, perfect. Uh, sorry, a moment, okay. We have a horse that uh, in the first moment was a little bit scared, it's normal. And then uh, slowly uh, approach the balloon, try to investigate and to understand uh, what's happened. And uh, is a, a normal re a reaction of the, of the horses. In the second case, we have a horse that, uh, of course, was uh, a little bit scared uh, at the beginning, but uh, in, uh, uh, in the second phase, uh, he, he, she, um, he didn't want to interact and start to pawing, uh, to show stress, uh, um, stress behavior, but didn't interact at all with the, the, the novel object. In the last case, uh, we have uh, the classic. Uh, uh, if the okay, in the last case, uh, we have the classic uh, uh, horse that uh, um, keep calm and doing uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Basically, uh, I will show you again. Okay, the the balloon appear, nothing. <laughs> Okay, very quiet. Uh, she was, uh, he, he was hitting and we, he continued to do what uh, he was doing before. Um, okay, uh, in the last videos we have some example of the positive reinforcement test reaction. In the first we have a horse that uh, is very interesting in learning the, the task, is very um, is very good, uh, is very positive. Uh, uh, he shows not a uh, sign of aggression. He watched me because he wants uh, want to convince me to give the treat uh, without doing nothing. But after he understand that you have to touch the, the target uh, and collaborate. <laughs> These tests are um, five minutes longer. So I, I need five minutes uh, for, uh, uh, for teach uh, this to the horse. It's very the horse uh, learn very, very fast, uh, in positive and negative uh, way. Okay, in this case it's beautiful because the horse look at me and say, I, I have to do this? Okay, I do. And, and then um, going to, to touch the, the target. In the last videos, I have a horse that uh, didn't want to collaborate with me and was, I think, bothered from the sound of clicker, so uh, he, he, he became a little bit uh, nervous. Uh, uh, I use always the same method to teach the, the, ta the task to the horses, but in this case, um, the horse uh, is not positive reinforced uh, from the, the carrots, uh, from my 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 action and uh, fine uh, in the in the hand uh, he decide that uh, is enough okay stop he stop to 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 learn okay uh, this we have uh, the example of uh, what uh, I uh, have done with uh, the um, physiological parameters okay I talk you about earth uh, earth rate variability and this is an image that represents uh, the method that I used uh, to, for analyze uh, HIV view. Um, okay, it's a little bit complex, uh, the uh, analysis of HIV view. Uh, uh, could be made in time, frequency domain, or, or in, um, with nonlinear analysis. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, what is funny, if you look at uh, the ACZ traces, uh, without at uh, any time at which you have, um, uh, have uh, do the, the balloon test, you can say this is before the appearance of a balloon, and this is after the appearance of the balloon, okay? This is the, mo the exact moment in which uh, the balloon appears, okay? The heart rate uh, increases uh, very badly, 
and um, okay, this is uh, uh, interesting things. And this is the part that analyzes uh, the earth rate uh, variability. Okay, that basically is uh, the difference between uh, the uh, two R peaks uh, of the um, of the two SCZ traces. Okay, the, the the variation between these space uh, are not uh, visible. Okay, in this case, yes, but generally are not visible. But there are some variations that are linked to the activation of sympathetic and parasympathetic branch. The sympathetic branch is the, the branch that uh, is activated here, okay, and the parasympathetic here, simply. Okay? So, what I um, discovered with my PhD work, I discovered that uh, the horse stabled. Uh, in uh, horse race stable uh, have more difficulties to cope uh, with uh, environmental stimuli, uh, with uh, um, the presence of an uh, um, unknown human in, uh, in the box, and uh, they manifest greater stress behavior, like pawing, like doing some movement with the head, uh, chewing, uh, etc and uh, have greater activation uh, uh, throughout the, um, the heart rate variability, we've seen that uh, um, um, there are uh, um, greater activation of the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. They also have a greater difficulty in learning uh, the task, okay? the, positive in the, in the positive reinforcement task. Thank you for attention and cheers from uh, Harry, that is my 30 years old uh, horse, okay, from Italy. <laughs> Alors, merci Martina. Bon, c'est un you. peu plus technique, hein, mais bon, c'est intéressant de voir les deux côtés quand même. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions Uh, thank you for your presentation. Okay. Uh, so you spoke to us about single box and kind of improvement. Today, the stack ball, uh, we see more and more box with terrace. With? Terrace. With an exit. Okay. So what do you think about these boxes? And um, did you some studies about this? Uh, no, basically no. Um, the difference uh, of um, the management uh, in the stable in which I do my PhD work uh, is that the race horse uh, are uh, stabled uh, in uh, box without paddock and without the possibility to go outside. They stay all the time in the box, 23 hours a day, okay? The other horses has the possibility to uh, go outside or because have uh, uh, the, the box with the paddock or because are uh, manually uh, lead to, to the paddock. So I think that of course uh, the presence of the paddock and the possibility for the horse to choose uh, when go outside and when go inside uh, is very good. And the interesting things uh, is that uh, if you look at the horse, uh, often they stay outside when a human think, okay, it's better that they go inside like rain, like snowing, you go to the stable and find your horse uh, outside, uh, under the rain, under everything, basically. Thank you for the question.